Quick disclaimer before you watch this video, you're about to learn more tips, strategies, and resources about Facebook ads than you've ever had before in any course or mentorship that you've ever been in. So just a quick warning because your brain might actually explode with the amount of value you're about to get in this video. Ugh, all right, let's get this stuff over with. Oh. Guys, I know we just came back from lunch and you had your food, you got your energy, you played in the playground, but we need to pay attention. One, two, three, eyes on me. Because last time I checked, none of you have found your first winning product with Facebook ads yet. And that includes you in the back, Timmy. I see you on your phone right now. Multitasking is a lie. I will confiscate that phone if you don't pay attention. So guys, if you haven't checked out the last video, we did create a brand new Shopify store from scratch. I'll link this up above. So. For context, we have a store where we're selling these spiritual organite pyramids. Now, because I'm an absolute OG, I've already scaled the store to $100 a day without even launching a Facebook ad. That's how good I am. So you might wanna pay attention because the first thing we're gonna cover is doing customer research. Now, we covered this in the previous video, but the fastest and easiest way to create winning ads and product descriptions without really having to do any work at all is simply hopping onto Amazon. So we're selling this crystal pyramid right here, and I hopped onto Amazon, found a similar product, and I scrolled down to the reviews. Now, all you want to do to create a winning ad is simply look at the most common phrases and words that people are saying because your customers are going to be the ones on Amazon and they're going to tell you why they bought the item that you're selling. So all you have to do to be relatable and come up with benefits that people care about is just to read what they're saying and reword it. You're reverse engineering. You don't even have to come up with any copy on your own. These people have already done it for you. All you have to do is put this all into a Word document where you have the best lines, the most common phrases, and then once you've done all of that, you wanna figure out which one of these benefits is the most important to your target audience. And usually that's gonna be the one that comes up the most frequently. So for this pyramid, I had no idea why people actually bought these. And it turns out sleep is a big part of it. Plus it's a nice decoration for your office, your workspace. People claim that it gives them more energy. I don't know if that works, but clearly it's something people care about. So I'm gonna put that in my ad. And this is the best way to absolutely understand what your customer wants and read their mind without really having to do any work at all. Now that we have some understanding of our customers and why they would buy our item, the next step is to come up with the demographics. And that is the age, gender, and interest of your target audience. Now, for a lot of products, they are pretty gender neutral. They can be used by both. So in your Facebook ads, the best practice would be to go with broad targeting. So 18 to 65 plus, doing all genders. And for the interest, you might wanna do something related to the niche of the product you're selling. So if you're selling a fitness product, gym, different types of gyms or fitness is a good practice to follow. Now, if it's applicable, the best way to maximize your dinero that you're spending on your ads is the 75% rule. Now, basically, this is where if you have 75% of your target audience that's a specific gender, education level, age range, relationship status, etc., then you wanna narrow down by that so that your ads are automatically reaching the best and most likely people to convert and buy Buy your product. So since we're selling crystal pyramids, I typed in crystals and interest in Facebook audience insights. And we see that over 75% is women. So I will be narrowing down by women. And if you're selling makeup products, it's going to be around 90%. So you do want to narrow down by women. Don't spend the money on the guys, on the fellas. You're just wasting your time there. Unless you're James Charles. Hi, sisters. Ah! Relationship status. We see married is 49%, but it's not 75%. So I would just keep it there education level it is very highly college and high school oriented so you might want to consider you know bundling the two personally though i'm just going to keep it broad now one of the biggest problems people make with picking their facebook interests is going way too narrow with the actual interests that they choose we usually stick with one category so let's say we're selling this crystal pyramid we go into our facebook interests type in crystal then we go to suggestions now the reason why I'm not a big fan of suggestions is you really narrow down the audience you're gonna be advertising to because gemstone, crystal healing quartz, all the people that are in these interests are pretty much overlapping. It's the same exact audience. So a way I like to sort of diversify and try to find new people that might not be in these audiences but are interested in my product is to type in crystal into the audience insights and look at the page likes. This is gonna tell you so much about your target demographic and the way I like to do it in columns is going into top magazines that people that like crystals are interested in, top brands that they like, TV shows they like. We got keywords related to our product with less than a million in size, more than a million in size, and similar activity slash niche. So for people that are interested in crystals, 
probably gonna be the same type of people that are really crazy about their sign and being Capricorn Sagittarius. Also, very interested in their chakra flows, their energy, and just unlocking their body to the point where you Neanderthals watching this video just can't comprehend the level that I'm on. I'm on a different plane than you, buddy. I'm just better than you. The last category is affinity pages, and I know that might sound a little bit crazy, but basically, Facebook lets you know the pages that people that like crystals are very interested and likely to like as well. So Sage Goddess, Chick Soul, we can target this in our Facebook ads, and this is just a great way to separate our interest into different columns, keeping it organized, because so many people are just free balling it, and they have no idea, and they can't actually come up with different trends and patterns. And if you can recognize the patterns, like, oh my God, all the TV show interests related to crystals are doing really well, then let me create more audiences that are related to TV shows that people that like crystals also enjoy. So basically you just fill out the different columns with different interests that you found in your research. So when we scroll through this list, it literally lets you know all of the different interests that you could be targeting that you probably never even thought about. So you just keep it nice and organized and this is easier to actually find out what interests and categories you should be doing when you're scaling a certain product. Awesome, so now that we got those sections done, let's actually talk about ads. Now, the main thing people have wrong about ads is they think it's a screaming match. All of our competitors selling the same products need to be able to scream at the top of their lungs, buy, 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 and whoever screams the loudest is the one who gets the customer. And that just can't be farther from the truth. Baby, bye, bye, bye. So what's the main goal of our ad? Well, it's to create enough curiosity and intrigue for our product so that somebody, our target customer, goes off of the safe haven of Facebook and Instagram where they're swiping all day, looking at models, popping bottles, going full throttle like they're Aristotle. And we need to convince them to go off of that platform and hop onto our product page. So look at your ads right now and ask yourself, if I was in front of my dream buyer, looking them dead on in the eyes, would I say the same things that I'm saying right now in my ads to them? Most likely not, because a lot of you are just screaming, bye, bye, bye. bye, bye. Now, when it comes to writing ad copies, there's three simple formulas that I use every single time that work like a charm. Now, the first one is a main benefit plus call to action. This is very simple, basically just doing one sentence about your product, the main benefit that it can serve to your target audience. And then after you do that sentence, you wanna have some sort of call to action like for a limited time only, say 50% off this product. So for instance, let's say we're selling the crystal pyramids. We might wanna do for a limited time only, save 50% off our crystal pyramids and for the main benefit it might be something like hey transform your life and become the best version of yourself in only 21 days so that's a great benefit because that's what people care about when they buy my product now the second formula is question to identify your audience then a solution plus call to action so basically you start off with a question that identifies your audience like hey do you want to transform your life then they'll say yes then you pose the solution which is always going to be your product so hey using this crystal pyramid you will notice an increase in your energy and your productivity levels something along those lines that's basically just answering the question that you pose followed by a call to action which is for a limited time only or check out these amazing pyramids before we sell out and the final ad copy formula is main benefit or a question to identify your audience plus three to four bullet point emotional benefits then a call to action now if you want a quick example of what that looks like i did one right here for our crystal pyramids, which basically is, hey, transform your personal and professional life in 30 days with these strange handmade pyramids. Then we got our three benefits, dramatically improves your sleep, helps you clear your mind, breathes new energy into your life. Then we have our call to action, which is click shop now to see why real doctors can't deny the breakthrough power of these strange pyramids. So that is just like basically talking about an article about these pyramids it creates that curiosity creates that intrigue doesn't sell too heavily then we got the link to our product now if you want some simple formulas for writing effective benefits that can create winning facebook ads for your product i highly recommend you follow these right here now i've been using these for years they've worked like a charm so hey do difficult thing in specific period of time even if you have shortcomings so Let's say we're selling a skincare product, get the best skin of your life in only 30 days, even if you have extremely oily or dry skin. Next benefit, achieve desirable thing like an expert, even without shortcoming. And you can get rid of like an expert, you don't have to have that. So if we're selling a fishing product, catch as many fish as you possibly can, like a Bass Pro Fisherman, without spending thousands on fancy equipment. So without 
shortcoming or alternative method. Then we got how to eliminate biggest problem you have without doing thing you hate within specific time frame. So how to eliminate stubborn belly fat without giving up the food you love within 21 days or less. Here's three more frameworks. So how to get desired result without thing you fear most in specific time frame guaranteed. A lot of these are time frame oriented because they just work really well. So create the room of your dreams without buying that expensive, bougie ass furniture in 14 days or less guaranteed. That's a really good one. You don't even need to have the specific time frame if you don't want. Uh, then we got say goodbye to frustration. I absolutely love this one. So say goodbye to blackheads forever, something along those lines. Say goodbye to paying hundreds for a mechanic to fix your car. This is a really great way of having those effective benefits that are gonna drive curiosity and get people to click your ad and be sold by your product page. Now, two of the most important elements behind every single winning Facebook ad is an effective call to action and a headline. Now, one of the best ways to come up with your call to action is following one of these templates down below. You can read through these and use these in one of your ads. Definitely feel free. So we got four limited time only, save 50% off your crystal pyramid or whatever your product name is. Then we got this week only, save 30% off product name. These are some of the most common ones that have worked super well for years. We got check out product name. So check out these crystal pyramids. Before we sell out, only 30 units available. And when I was selling jewelry, that is a very, very effective way of doing it. Clothing, jewelry, stuff that's non-problem solvers, that's a great one to use, the supply available one. Then we also got check out why thousands of audience, thousands of mothers cannot stop raving about this type of product. So maybe a baby blanket. Now, once you have a great call to action, and that's basically just the last sentence of your primary text, then you'll have a little link to the product page, so always make sure you have that. But for your headline, which is what people on Facebook are gonna see under your ad, this is what I personally recommend. Either doing a main benefit of your product that is shortened down to eight words or less because then it gets cut off if it's more than that, or an urgency and limited supply sale. So you can do only 25 necklaces left in stock, shop now, limited time offer, save 50% off. Really just giving people more urgency and more reasons to why they should click your ad right now. Now, if you're selling a problem solving product, it's essential that you have a winning Facebook video ad. Now for that, I would recommend doing a few things. I need you to sit back. Relax, crack open a beer or Capri Sun, whatever you enjoy. Personally, I'm more of a Capri Sun man. And hop onto viral e-com ads. And all you have to do is place an order. They have many different packages that I highly recommend. The best one that's really good for beginners, if you're on more of a budget, is just doing the one video ad package. And you can save 20% off. So you don't have to pay 40 bucks. You can save 20% off if you click the link down below in my description and use my discount code Dobbins20 to save 20% off. This team is miles better than Fiverr or any video ad service you're gonna see out there. So again, I highly recommend using them so that you can just sit back and let the professionals create your winning Facebook ad for you without you having to do any work. Now for us, since we're selling a non-problem solving product that's very self-explanatory, we are gonna do a few edits and you can do this in Canva, it's totally free, where we're just gonna add some more saturation to our image so that those colors pop at you. So it really catches your attention because on Instagram and Facebook, there's a lot of distractions and the only way you're gonna get people to click your ad if you're selling through images is make sure it's as stand out worthy as possible. It's gotta be like a peacock. You gotta flex your feathers so that people know that you've arrived in the building. The big dog is here. The party doesn't start till I walk in. Now using the best supplier images we have, this is the ads I wanna go with for our crystal pyramid. So we're gonna link our ad to a collection where people can choose which pyramid they're interested in most. And I like that we have this little blue line separate Separating them and it's in the same color of our brand. Now, if you don't have great images for your necklace or if you have a clothing brand, it is absolutely essential that you have custom content. The supplier images on AliExpress or CJ Dropshipping or wherever you're sourcing from, most of the time are not gonna be good enough. So really simple, all you can do is just order the product to yourself, take some photos on your iPhone or if you have a professional camera, that's great. You can take some custom content or if you don't wanna do that, you can just send your product directly to the address of a micro-influencer. You pay them 
40 bucks, or you could literally just say, hey, can I get a free promo and I'll send you my product if they have a couple thousand followers? And you'd be surprised. If you say it to enough people, you're gonna get a few yeses, you're gonna get custom content, and I can guarantee that is gonna outperform any content that a supplier sends with some generic product images with a white background. Now, if you're selling a product under $50, the best way to test a dropshipping product on a budget is following the seven ad set method. So basically how the strategy works is you have seven different ad sets that are spending $5 a day. And the only difference between these ad sets is the interest you choose. So in one, you might have fitness, you might have soccer, baseball, football, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're just gonna have different interests. And you're gonna have the same two to four ads in each one of these ad sets. So you're gonna test all these ads. Now, after letting these run for two to three days, so about $100, that's when you have to decide when to kill or scale your ad sets. And in my case, if an ad set does not get a purchase within three days of testing, I'm killing it 100% of the time. Now, if it's been two days, it's spent $10 and it doesn't have an ad to cart, I'm killing it right there. And if it's spent after the first day $5 without five link clicks or an ad to cart, nine out of 10 times, that ad set's gonna be a dud. So I just kill it right there and save my money. Now, if your product's above $50, all you have to do is make sure each one of your ad sets is $10 a day instead of $5 so that you get your data a little bit faster because with products that are more expensive, you are gonna have to spend more money to test them and see if your customers are actually gonna be interested and buy this product from you. Now, before you run Facebook ads, you need to know what your break-even ROAS and your main KPIs are to measure if your ads are actually effective. Now, if you don't know what either of those terms mean, do not run Facebook ads until you watch this video. So ROAS is basically return on ad spend. So if I spend a dollar into my ads and I'm getting $4 back, that's a four ROAS right there. But it's a little bit of a misleading metric because you also gotta pay for your product costs. You can't just take people's money without actually fulfilling the order, unless you're a scammer or you're one of these fake gurus out here. But what you wanna do is calculate your break-even ROAS, which is basically your price of your product. So let's say it's this necklace and it's we're selling it for 30 bucks. Then we do parentheses $30, minus our product cost. So for this case, let's say our product costs $5. So what we would do is 30 minus five, which is 25, and we do 30, which is your price, divided by 25. So if we go to our trusty handy dandy calculator, our break even ROAS is 1.2. So if our ad set has a ROAS of 1.2 or higher, that means we're profitable, we can scale that ad set. And if it's below 1.2, so 1.1, 0.8, that means we should most likely kill that ad set. Now to know if your ad is doing well and you got a really killer creative, I do measure it through CTR and cost per unique link click. So 1.5% CTR is what I'm really aiming for with all my ads and that's basically I'm showing my ad to a thousand people and I want at least 15 of those to click onto my website or a hundred people, I want one and a half to click onto my website after they see my ad. So we're gonna find, where the hell is that half man ad? I don't really know. Cost per unique link click, I'm aiming for 60 cents per unique link click there. Uh, and then, honestly, I would say the most important metric is obviously purchases and whether or not you're profitable. So your ad might have a CTR that's a little bit lower or you might be paying a dollar per unique link click, which is a little bit rich for my blood. But if you're profitable, then just keep it running. Now for product page KPIs, I want a 5% add to cart ratio. So if 100 people visit my website, I want at least five of those people to add to cart. And out of those 5%, I'm aiming for at least one third of those people to convert into a purchase. So if I get, let's say, 10 people adding to cart, I wanna have at least three to four of those actually turning into a purchase, and that's my checkout page KPI. And my conversion rate is a 1.7% conversion. So we talked about how in our original campaign, we like to have seven unique interests that we're targeting. And let's say two or three of those does super well. So the next step is to launch a relaunch campaign where we target seven brand new interests at $5 a day, but we only show them the winning ad. Because at this point, you're gonna have some data and you're gonna know, okay, ad two is the one doing the best. The one with the photo and that sort of ad copy that was a little bit short and funny. So you're just gonna show your winning ad to these new audiences. And again, the name of the game, Test as many interests as you can. You wanna test like 40, 50, 100 different interests so that you can finally find the ones that you can really scale with CBOs down the line. Now, if you wanna know the fastest way to scale your dropshipping product, I highly recommend doing a CBO. Now, all you have to do is hop onto Facebook, create a new campaign, and the difference between a CBO campaign and an ABO is you set the budget at the campaign level. So you can do $50 or $100, 
And what ad sets should we actually put in this campaign? Well, for me, I like to put in my best interests, my best ad sets that have been super profitable for me. So I usually like to wait till I have at least three audiences with five plus purchases, and I'll put those three audiences into this CBO, and Facebook will spend that $100 however it likes. It really spends it pretty much evenly for a certain point, then it will favor a certain audience that's getting you the best results. And for the ad that I show to these audiences, it's gonna be the winning ad that's getting the best numbers in my other campaign. And you wanna make sure this is profitable after day one. It should be profitable. So you spend that $100 on day one, you're getting sales, and if it is profitable, the next thing you can do is duplicate this campaign to $200 a day. And if it works then, do it $400 a day, then $800 a day. And you can see how this has a snowball effect where damn, you went from $100 to now $800, and you're profitable, and you're going from $400 days to 2.5K days like my top students that have followed this exact framework with their ads. Now, one last thing. If you're having trouble finding winning dropshipping products, I recently just dropped a new case study that reveals how I've been able to scale my own brand's six figures and my students as well by finding winning products before they go viral. This is a brand new method that nobody else in the industry is ever doing, and it's been working extremely well for my students and helping them scale their Facebook ads to $1,000 a day, $2,000 a day, and even more. So if you want my help and you wanna learn my strategies more in depth, click that link down below and book a call with my team so that we can help you with your dropshipping business and scaling it to $1,000 a day in the next 90 days.